There we go, folks. Continuing with chemical formulas, we just did percent composition and empirical formula. And today, we're going to do molecular formulas, and hopefully, we'll be able to do a small amount of assignment 24 for you, just to give you a little homework boost. Now, a molecular formula, as we said earlier, indicates the actual number of atoms in each type of molecule. Now, it's possible for the molecular and empirical formulas to be the same. That's the case with water, H2O. Its empirical and molecular formulas are the same. To find the molecular formula, the process is similar to finding the empirical formula, but the molecular mass must also be known. So if I expect you to find the molecular formula, I have to give you the molecular weight of the compound. Okay, so let's take a look at example 19. The molecular mass of a compound, see, I just gave it to you, is found to be 91.1 .1 grams per mole. The analysis of the compound shows that I have 0 0.608 grams of nitrogen and 1.388 grams of oxygen, so only two elements. What's the empirical and molecular formula for this compound? Now, a special note here, I did not give you percent by weight this time. I actually gave you the weight. So we don't have to assume 100 grams of the compound to find out how many grams of each element I have. I've told you how many grams of each element I have. So we have 0 0.608 grams of nitrogen and 1.388 grams of oxygen. Now we need to find the mole ratio. So we can't keep it in grams, kiddos. We have to go from grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen. Nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole and grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen and oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. So we'll have moles of N and moles of O. So let's see what we get for the number of moles of each. We'll pull out our cheap calculator again. 0 0.608 divided by 14.01, let's make sure we can see that, um, 0 0.0434 moles of nitrogen, and let's do the same for uh, the oxygen, 1.388 divided by 16.00 is 0 0.0868 moles of O. Now I'll bet you can do that math in your head for the next step. But We'll do it on a calculator anyway. Isn't my next step to divide by the lowest number of moles, which is 0 0.0434. Of course, that's 1. I'm not going to do it on a calculator. I'm not going to insult your intelligence here. Isn't 0 0.0868 divided by 0 0.0434 2? Of course it is. So, my empirical formula, kiddos, is NO2, nitrogen dioxide. Now we're not done because this time I also want to find the molecular formula as well. And for that, I need to know the molecular weight, which I know. But I also need to know what I like to call the empirical weight. The empirical weight, obviously, is the weight of the empirical formula. Now that consists of a nitrogen, 14.01, and two oxygens, 16.00 apiece. So the empirical weight is 46.01 grams per mole. Now, is that the same as the molecular weight? Nope, it's not. How much bigger is the molecular weight than my empirical weight? Well, let's find out. 91.1 uh, divided by 46.01 is, boy, that's pretty doggone close to 2, isn't it? two times bigger. So my real compound is twice as big. Doesn't that mean that I'll have twice as many N's and twice as many O's? So the molecular formula would be N2, that's twice as many N's kiddos, O4. Okay, so here's my empirical, lowest whole number ratio notice, and here's my empirical, the actual ratio. Alrighty? So once again, I had to know the molecular weight to do that. Let's do another one. See how you guys are coming along here. A compound contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and has a molecular weight of 180 grams per mole. It's found to consist of 
41.0%. So can I say 41.0 grams of carbon out of, out of 100? 4.60 grams of hydrogen. So can I say 4.60%? Uh, can I say 4.60 grams out of 100? And the rest is oxygen. So we got to figure out what's left over from 100. So 100 minus 41.0 minus 4.60. Oh, I must have made a mistake. Let's try that again. 100 minus 41.0 minus 4.60 is 54.4% oxygen. So 54.4 grams out of 100 would be oxygen. And remember, step two, we have to find the number of moles of each. So grams of carbon to moles of carbon grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. Carbon is 12.01 grams per mole, hydrogen is 1.01, and oxygen is 16.00. So moles of C, moles of H, and moles of O. Okay, so here we go. 41 divided by 12.01 is... 3.41 moles of C, uh, 4.60 divided by 1.01 .01 is 4.55 moles of H, and finally 54.4 divided by 16.0 is 3.40 moles of O. So, you guys remember the last step? Come on, you do. Think, 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 think. You got it. Divide by the lowest number of moles. Okay, so that's one. That's one. Let's see, 4.55 divided by 3.40. Ooh, 1.34. Golly, those aren't whole numbers. I have to have whole number ratios. So what do you think I can do to these? Maintain this ratio, but make them whole numbers think? What if I tripled everything? What if I tripled the number of carbons, tripled the number of H's, and tripled the number of O's? That would give me three carbons. Let's see. 1.34 times 3 is, hey, four hydrogens. And 1 times 3, three oxygens. So now I have a whole number ratio. Pretty cool, isn't it? So my empirical formula, kiddos, would be, let's write it up here, C three H four O three right four or three to four to three. Let's find its empirical weight now. So that's going to be the weight of three carbons. So twelve point zero one times three plus four hydrogens. So four times one point zero one plus three oxygens. Okay, eighty eight. 0 0.07 grams per mole. Now, is that the same as the molecular weight? Nope, the molecular weight is 180 grams per mole. The empirical weight is 88.07. Let's see how much bigger the molecular formula is than the empirical. Hey, two times bigger. So, that means my molecular formula is two times bigger than C3H4O3 or C6H8O6. So that's my molecular, the actual ratio. That's my empirical, the lowest whole number ratio. And that's how we do it. Now we have a lab coming up next week, so I'm going to hold off on doing this part for you, but these are hydrated compounds. And uh, we'll, we'll discuss that more in an upcoming video, particularly when I do the pre-lab for you um, in school at the lab. So what I think I want to do for you is a little bit from assignment 24, if you don't mind. Somebody in class actually requested a little bit of homework help. So um, let's take a look at page 253. In your textbook, now that's the blue book. If you guys are using the black book, it'll be a little bit different. Um, number 33. Okay, so i got to reach behind me here. I don't have my book out right now. I guess I...
should have been thinking like a carpenter that makes stairs. You know, they always think one step ahead. <laughs> All right, anyway, so we have uh, 253. Oh, this is the teacher's book here. We can still use it. That's okay. So we have uh, a compound, CuSO4 dot 5H2O. And we want to find the percent by mass of water in this compound. Okay, so not the percent by weight of each element, but I'm just interested in the water. So we have to find the we have the formula, so we have to find the weight of the compound. So we have a copper, and copper's atomic mass is let's see, 63.55. Sulfurs is 32.07. And we have four oxygens, and there's 16.00. And a lot of you are wondering, what the heck do I do with that water? Well, that dot means that for every one mole of copper sulfate units, there are five moles of water stuck to it, attracted to it. So what I do is I add the weight of five waters. So five, and each water, we have two hydrogens plus an oxygen. So each water weighs 18.02 grams per mole. So let's figure out the total weight, shall we? So we have 5 times 18.02, so 90.1 grams of water, plus 4 times 16 is 64 grams from my oxygens, 32.07 from my sulfur, and 63.55 from my copper. So 249.72 grams per mole. Now what's the percent by weight water? So what I want to do is I want to take my weight of water 5 times 18.02 divided by the total weight of the compound 249.72 and then we'll write that as a percentage. So here we go 5 times 18.02 divided by 249.72 gives me 36.08% H2O. The rest of it would be what we call the anhydrous compound without water. Okay, so that's number 33 in your homework tonight. The next problem is number 36. So let's take a look at 36 kiddos. So 36 says we have a compound that's 63.50% silver, and what else is it? 8.25% by weight nitrogen, and finally 28.25% oxygen. So whatever's left over is 28.25 from 100 is my oxygen. And we need to find the empirical formula. So step one, assume we have 100 grams of the stuff. So I have 63.50 grams out of 100 of silver, 8.25 grams of nitrogen, and 28.25 grams of oxygen. So we need to go from grams to moles of silver, grams to moles of nitrogen, and grams to moles of oxygen. Oxygen 16.00, nitrogen 14.01, and our silver is 107.87. So this will give us the number of moles of each element in my compound. Moles of silver, moles of nitrogen, moles of oxygen. So let's plug and chug and see what we get. 63.5 divided by 107.87 is... Uh, looks like it's 0 0.5887 moles of silver. 8.25 divided by 14.01 is 0 0.5889 moles of nitrogen. <clears throat> and then finally 28.25 divided by 16.00 is 1.766 moles of oxygen. Now the last step, kiddos, is dividing by the lowest number, 0.5887, so that's a 1 for silver, 0.5887, that'll be a 1 for nitrogen, 0.5887. Can you do that one in your head? 
let's see, 1.766 divided by 0.5887 is, I'll be darn, it's pretty doggone close to 3, isn't it? 3. So we have AgNO3. Voila, there is your empirical formula between silver, nitrogen, and oxygen. Okay, uh, 37 is pretty similar, and 47 is more percent by weight. And you guys should handle that pretty quickly. Then we have some other problems that you need to do. Other problem number one is a percent by weight problem. I give you some of the answers there. Please make sure you guys show the work. And number two on the other problems is going to be a molecular formula. Now, I know this is going along. You always have the freedom to shut this off, but think about this. I'm helping you with your homework here. So this is going to go a little bit longer today again, sort of like the last one we did. Sorry, not really. All right, so we have a compound that is 0.97 grams of phosphorus. And what else do we have? 1.25 grams of oxygen. And that's it. This phosphorus and oxygen. Its molecular weight is 284 grams per mole. I want to find the molecular formula of the compound. We'll find the empirical along the way also. So 0.97 grams of phosphorus, 1.25 grams of O. Go from grams to moles of phosphorus. And we'll go from grams to moles of O. Phosphorus, we don't see that a whole lot. 30.97 grams per mole. Oxygen, 16.00. Let's pull out our cheap calculator here. And uh, 0.97 divided by 30.97 gives me 0 0.031 moles of phosphorus. 1.25 divided by 16 gives me 0 0.0781 moles of O. Now, those aren't very pretty. Let's see if we can prettify them, shall we? Divide each by the lowest number, 0 0.031. So let's see. 0 0.0781 divided by 0 0.031 is 2.5. Come on, man. 2.5? That's not a whole number. What do you think we can do here? If you said to double each one to make them whole numbers, you're correct. So two phosphoruses and five oxygens. So that means my empirical formula is P2O5. Let's find the empirical weight, shall we? So it's going to be the weight of two phosphoruses. So we have 2 times 30.97 plus uh, the weight of five oxygens. So that would be uh, 90 grams per mole, 5 times 16, th oh, 80 grams per mole, sorry. And so the empirical weight is 141.9 uh, 1.94. Okay, that's the empirical weight, grams per mole. Now I want the molecular formula, kiddos. So the molecular weight is 284. So we have 284 divided by the empirical weight, 141.94. Can you guys do that without a calculator? Isn't that pretty darn close to 2? So that means my empirical formula is going to be 2 times P2O5, which is P4O10. So my empirical formula, that's the lowest whole number ratio, P2O5, my molecular, P4O10. Okay? Hey, your homework, I think, is about half done. I think you guys are on your way. So enjoy. I hope this is uh, easy for you. Most kids don't seem to struggle with this too much. So uh, come see me for help. Rewatch the videos as much as you want. Um, and hopefully you'll get the hang of it. So have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>